Top Gear is probably one of the best and most loved British programs of all time. It really is up there with Downton Abbey on its popularity, it is just that good. And the show has a crazy amount of popularity and fame across the globe. But it really does intrigue you and lead you to ask the question, why was Top Gear so good? Because it is a motoring show and motoring shows, while they are popular, they are not typically mainstream programs that blow other programs out of the water. They are fairly niche, obviously you have to be interested in cars and generally have a knowledge of cars to the extent that you want to spend an hour of your time watching a program specifically about that subject. And I think that's why Top Gear was so successful. It took the focus away from the cars and put it back into the entertainment aspect of a TV program. And I think that was absolutely crucial in Top Gear's success. It was the entertainment factor. Now, just before we go any further, I think it's important I establish what I'm talking about when I refer about Top Gear being popular. I'm talking about the era from 2002 to 2015. Of course, you know that as the era of Jeremy Clarkson, James May and Richard Hammond. Because if you didn't know, the show has actually been running since 1977, where it started out on the BBC Midlands channel. And there are still new Top Gear episodes coming out with new presenters and a new focus of the show. So now that's out of the way, let's look at the first reason why Top Gear was so good. And I think this could be nothing else other than the presenters. The presenters absolutely make Top Gear what it is. Now of course I'm referring to Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May. Perhaps the three most famous names in the motoring industry as far as an entertainment standpoint. And these three are not the usual TV presenters you would find on a normal program. Normally TV presenters are very filtered, they're very political correct and generally especially in the UK presenters are rather reserved in what they're like they're generally quite kind and they have a little bit of banter generally but it's very sort of restricted not very open comedy these three presenters of course if you ever watch an episode of Top Gear you will know are nothing like the typical presenter they are unique and what do I mean by that well what I mean is the way they present is totally different to anything you would get on any other type of show they are unfiltered and I want to talk about that in more detail now. And what do I mean by being unfiltered? Well, I mean their comedy is not restricted. It doesn't feel as if there's a script. They don't feel forced in what they're saying. They make edgy jokes. And while that might have put them in some bad light, it certainly entertained the vast majority of people who appreciated the way their comedy worked. Especially in Britain, we enjoy unfiltered comedy. And so that is why the show was such a big hit. And it was the same in other countries. People absolutely love the way their comedy was unfiltered because as much as people get offended easily these days there are still lots of people that absolutely love unfiltered comedy and it shows like Top Gear that filled that very very small niche of people and programs that were willing to risk their reputation for comedy and another thing I think is perfect about the presenters is their balance of comedy and entertainment with also providing a serious motoring show. Now of course many people don't watch Top Gear for the motoring aspect. People will generally just watch that as a respect for the presenters and the show. But generally people watch the program for the funny sketches and the bits where they interviewed celebrities and things like that. People weren't really interested in the specs of cars and stuff like that, but people still watched it. However, at the end of the day, it was a motoring show and there's no denying that the three people, the three guys were still very, very knowledgeable about cars. And so they also filled that gap for people who were seriously into their motoring, who wanted all the technical specs and all the technical things you would expect from a motoring show. So that's why the presenters were good. They had the balance of comedy with actual technical knowledge and it didn't feel forced or restricted it was unfiltered and it was good comedy that the vast majority of people could enjoy another thing to look at when we're looking at presenters for a program is looking at their chemistry generally the chemistry between presenters seems very fake and almost as if they're putting it on as an act Generally, it doesn't seem like they're friends, and so it seems fairly forced. However, I think the brilliant bit about Top Gear is that the guys generally seemed 
to have chemistry. They had the confidence to get annoyed at each other, to criticize each other, to mock each other. And I think that's brilliant. A lot of programs spend way too much time focusing on being nice and polite and careful and this and that and the other. But at the end of the day, people don't find that interesting. People find conflict interesting. And I think if you've ever watched more than one episode of Top Gear, you would have gathered the fact that the Top Gear cast has a lot of conflict. If you've ever watched a road trip, you will always see that they are leaving one of the guys behind at some point along the journey. There's none of this waiting for the other guy to finish. They they are all really there's no sort of silly false politeness they will genuinely leave a guy in the middle of the road in the middle of nowhere just for the fun of it and that is awesome so now we've explored why the presenters are so good i want to talk about the show now now of course the presenters were a very 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 crucial part of the success of the program but top gear as a show was also very well made there's only so much freedom a presenter can have if the program is completely strict and there's no room to play with and there's no fun or no entertaining aspects there's nothing the presenters can really do other than abide by what the producers are giving them and the fact that the programs had very very entertaining aspects times where they would go around in tanks and go on road trips and stuff like that shows you that the producers understood what the program was meant to be they weren't trying to force a really serious motoring show on the audience and that showed the fact that only around 15 20 25 minutes of a one hour program was dedicated to the actual purpose of the program shows you that the producers understood their audience. They understood that the vast majority of people really did not care about the technical aspects of the car. Of course they would tell you the horsepower and the speed, very basic things, but they wouldn't go into things like torque or stuff like that in much detail because the vast majority of people, it means nothing. They focused on how the car felt to drive and how the car looked, which is what the vast majority of people who are interested in cars care about. And of course, there are a minority of people that criticise the show for the fact that it did not focus enough on the motoring aspect and focused more on entertainment. And I also think that the BBC deserves a great amount of respect for allowing such freedom to be had with a timeless programme. Of course, I'm referring to the fact that the programme ran from 1977. To completely change how a programme was ran and how the programme was was a big step for the BBC and a big leap of faith. Of course, that did pay off. And I guess you're probably wondering, why aren't Jeremy Clarkson, James Nay and Richard Hammond on Top Gear anymore? Where did it all go wrong? Because they were a brilliant cast of presenters. Why would the BBC want to get rid of them? Well, it wasn't for anything they did on the show. If you're from the UK, you probably already know this, but if you're not, I'm going to tell you guys now. What basically happened was Jeremy Clarkson was a very strong character and he still obviously is i think you can probably get that from the show but basically what happened was he punched a producer i believe or one of the cast members of top gear in the face because they served him some cold meat and this wasn't a one-off thing he had done multiple things had previous warnings before this happened and despite how high profile jeremy clarkson was and how important he was to the bbc and top gear they really had no other choice as a responsible employer they had to fire him and of course as clarkson left Hammond and May also followed as a show without Clarkson wouldn't be a show at all. And you will be happy to hear that Richard Hammond, James May and Jeremy Clarkson are all still going strong on the Grand Tour on Amazon Prime. And I would argue it's actually better than Top Gear so if you haven't watched that already make sure to go and check it out. And also if you like the Top Gear format they still do have that running on the BBC. I think there's been two or three seasons in between the time that Clarkson left and now. So you can go on the BBC I play it and you can watch them so there you have it that is the end of the video so guys do you agree with me do you think that top gear was good and if you did think it was good do you agree with my reasons for why let me know down in the comments below if you haven't subscribed already make sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on so you never miss a video and if you could also drop a like that would greatly help the youtube algorithm and help more people find this video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>